couple of weeks, we looked at um, the role of the Holy Spirit and um, how the beginning of the church happened. And I want to share something with you that um, just impacted me over the last few weeks as, as I looked at, at Scripture. And in Acts chapter 2, verse uh, 42 through 47, I'll just read the passage and then I'm going to center in on something um, as we continue to move forward. And it says, verse 42, as a result of the Holy Spirit's work at Pentecost, this is what happened. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to the fellowship, to the breaking of bread and to prayer. Everyone was filled with awe. Many wonders and miraculous signs were done by the apostles. All the believers were together and had everything in common, selling their possessions and goods, and gave to anyone as he had need. Every day they continued to meet together in the temple courts. They broke bread in their homes and ate together with glad and sincere hearts, praising God and enjoying favor with all people. This is where the rubber hits the road. And then the Lord added to their number daily those who were being saved. There's two words I want to share with you. One, that word favor means that which affords grace. Roughly translated, that's respect. People in our community, non-believers, unchurched, whatever the lost people, may not understand what we do. They may not even agree. Some may be vehemently opposed to what we do. But because of who we are and how God deals with us on a regular basis, my hope and my prayer is to allow God to do something in in our midst and to see people saved daily. Can you can you just agree with me that you're not comfortable and not okay with just a couple kids coming from time to time and a couple adults? I think we'd all agree that we want to see people here at the altar. We want to see those waters. We want to have the highest water bill ever because we're baptizing people that often. Because God can do that in and through us. But the thing that in and through what we're going through now, I pray that we would gain the respect of the people of our community. I think it was a great sign of respect by our school system to allow the churches of our community to come together for faith on the field and to allow us the opportunities they have over the last few years to invest in the Head Start program, to invest in different areas of our school and to be allowed in to be able to share with students. And now the school is inviting us to be a part of Adopt a School. My hope and my prayer is out of that respect the question would be answered if Central Baptist Church ceased to exist for whatever reason, that we would be sincerely missed. That's that sense of awe and respect because out of that and those other things that people could see in the community in that era, in that time, people were being saved every day. And that that word saved, and this is what breaks my heart when I continue to go back to that word. It means rescued from peril. That means that there are people in our community without Christ that are living, number one, in the closest thing that they'll ever be to heaven without Christ. This is the closest they're going to see until we as believers move into their lives, invest in them, and see God do something in their lives where God rescues them. The work of rescuing is God's, but the word of telling them is ours. Inviting them and letting them see what God's doing in your life and in the life of other believers in this church. Being a part of Sunday school, being a part of a small group, being a part of one of the Wednesday night Bible studies. To see their lives changed so that they don't live maybe in the hell that they're already living in because of their life situation and what's going on. And so my hope is, is that we become that kind of church where people are being saved daily. And not just in Crandall, but many of you work in Dallas and Irving and all across the Metroplex. That out as a result of what we do in here, that people are being saved in your workplace. It's so 
is so possible for people to be saved in a workplace. It happens at my workplace all the time. It can happen in yours. And why not? Because that was in the community. That wasn't happening in a church building. That was happening in people's homes. That was happening in people's driveways, garages, where they had dinner, where they had supper. And so out of that, my prayer is that God would do such a work in our lives because it goes back to John 17, is that the, that's the job of the Holy Spirit to move and then empower and to equip and to inspire us to see people saved because of the work of the Holy Spirit in us. So let's pray and see what God does in the midst of these next few moments uh, in our business meeting as well. Father, we thank you. And Father, we ask that you would break our heart. Father, not for the condition of our building and the people that are in it, but Father, for the people that are not in it. And Father, we may not be ever perfect people or a perfect church, but by God, there are people that need you that may never walk into the walls of this church that need Christ as Savior and Lord to make an impact in their lives and the impact in the lives of their children. And so, Father, I ask that you would just break our heart. That, Father, far too long, maybe for some of us, we've looked at temporal things, things that will fade away. In the end, Father, there are people who are fading away, lives at stake in what we do. And so, Father, I ask you to impact us, to help us to understand the impact of decisions made, even in here tonight. Father, impact our community, our state, and our nation as we give, as we serve, and as we minister and equip each other. Father, we ask that you would be glorified in everything that we do tonight. And Father, may your Holy Spirit reign, move, and empower and inspire us tonight. Father, it's in Christ's name that I pray. Amen.